Hello everyone, this is Diane. Today I'm going to do a introduction, really, um, to the tag, tag your it video that I promised I would do. And I'm going to be working on tag bases. And then the video that will actually be the tag your it video will be um, finishing up some of the tags, the tag bases that we're making today. So I decided to just make a bunch of tag bases and I'm cutting cardstock, colored cardstock, um, white and cream cardstock, and even some patterned cardstock. I have some shipping tags that are already made and I have used a file folder. You can use cracker boxes and things like that. Uh, what else? I guess that's it for the bases. And <clears throat> I have all kinds of things that I can use to glue onto the bases to be the background. So I'm choosing rather subtle things, uh, neutral, as far as color or design, or both. And uh, we'll be able to add things on top of this background that I'm making uh, to match whatever journal we're making. So this is what I still have to cover, and I just want to show you some of the materials that I used for covering these things. So these are wallpaper pieces, and this is um, a cream-colored cardstock, and then I can just make them into a tag shape. And I can punch a hole and add whatever kind of reinforcement I want to add. But I may just leave them squared until I actually decorate them or put them in a journal until I know what I want to do with them. So this is wallpaper. It's uh, It's got a stripe, but it's a pretty basic and neutral background. And this green looks like woven fabric. I love the color of it. And some pink. I did cut the tags into the same um, size as these shipping tags, which are three by six and a half, and some I cut bigger, three and a half by seven. And then I had pieces left over from whatever piece I was cutting. So I have some odd shapes also, or odd sizes. So those are wallpaper <clears throat> that I have music paper. This happens to be vintage. doesn't have to be vintage. Just going to punch the hole in there. This was made with one of the chipping tags. I just used one sheet of paper for both of these tags. And I have wrapping paper. These are pink pale pink cardstock pieces and some like a handmade paper. This isn't like, this isn't handmade, but it's definitely, it's got flex in it. It's fibers. And I've had this for a really long time. And this is a fibrous, more fibrous paper. And this is a mulberry paper. Um, you can use um, stamps. So I took some of my background stamps and this is a French script. So I just stamp that. I do this quite a lot. And a dictionary background page or stamp. And I love this. I have this, um, it's a patterned cardstock. It was from a patterned cardstock, but it's just a, like a, sorry, the lighting isn't great. I'm trying, my camera is down lower. My phone is down lower for this video. Um, so I don't know. Please be patient with me. I'm getting a lot of comments about the new setup and many of them, some of them are good and many of them are uh, telling me things that need improvement. So just please be patient as I try to figure out my setup with having the phone overhead. 
So, and I do appreciate your feedback, by the way. Anyway, I like the color of this. It reminded me of a burlap color. So I thought barnyard, so I stamped my chicken wire background on it. And um, right here is where the stamp ended. And look how nicely I lined it up. It could have been up a little higher, but I'm happy with it. It just looks like a shadow to me. I don't know. Does this help? I can't really see my my phone because it's down. It's eye level. So I'd have to dip my head underneath it to look up and see it. Uh, okay, so those are background stamps, and then this one is a wood grain background stamp. So background stamps are really fun. Or even if you don't have a background stamp, to just take a small patterned stamp, like dots or something, and just dot it around on your tag to make your own background. And that does not belong there. And this is another background stamp. So white card stock, green card stock, and a shipping tag. Another fun thing to use, if you have it, is uh, piano roll paper. Now this one is different because it has much wider openings in it. So it was fun to put that on a green cardstock and let the green show through. And then I have just your typical ones. Again, just cardstock. And then these are patterned cardstocks, and I'm not going to glue anything to them because they already have their own design on the background, but they're um, neutral enough or subtle enough that I can embellish them further. So this is from a heavy pack of, that one I can do, heavy pack of cardstock that was, looks like it was painted. In ombre colors so I can use some of those to make tags and then just some patterns that have a, a subtle enough background even a floral pattern doesn't have a lot of color the pattern is small and compact so there's not like a lot of open space to distract it's kind of a steady flow of pattern so you could put a little girl on there and it would be really cute oh here's I was trying to find this I stamped this before and then I just couldn't find that tag so I stamped another one and this actually looks better turned out better I looked and looked and looked for that uh, more pattern cardstock so some dots and this beige color with some lace looking pattern on it. Even the toile I think is subtle enough. Depends on what you want to add to it. This has more design to it and different colors and, and shades but I think there we could do something with it. And ledger paper. I have a lot of ledger paper. This one is a yellow. And I thought, I did not even realize that this ledger paper is doesn't have the ledger lines on the back. So when I added glue to my card and I stuck it down there, I thought I was going to get a pattern back here. But I didn't. So this one is plain. And then I just cut another piece, put another piece on the front. So it's got that paper on front and back. a pretty steep angle. I don't usually cut them that steep. So that makes a nice tag. I like the ledger on tags. And this is another ledger page that I have. This came from a really old book from the 1860s. And it's not like I took apart uh, an old 1860s ledger book well I did but um, once that book was used up as a ledger then someone else took that book and glued newspaper clippings and things on top of the ledger 
and the book was falling apart. I got it really cheap at a flea market a few years ago. And I, I could see some of these pages, but the other ones were covered up. So I was able to remove a lot of the newspaper and save some of the pages. And I even like this torn edge here. I would definitely use that. And the paper isn't so brittle that I, I think I could actually fold it into a signature. But I don't have a lot of pages of it. I do have some, and they're, they're long. But I took this ledger and glued it. Well, this is 1825, not 65. I was thinking it was 1860s, but look how gorgeous they are. And you can even see the ledger, the ink that was written on the back coming through. I love that. So that would be uh, really nice to add some things on top of that. This is a gift bag. I may have gotten this in a Happy Mail, but it is textured. Very soft material. I love this. So I put some of that on white cardstock. Just like that. Flip it over. At the end of the, after I show you all of these, I'm going to show you a list that I wrote of um, the bases and coverings. And I will hold it and then you can pause it and copy the list if you want to. So I love this and I will definitely make more with this. And then we have uh, book pages. Well, before I get to the book pages, let me do this one. I thought I had... Oh, never mind, it's okay. Um, so we can also use pattern instructions. If you get sewing patterns, either vintage or new ones, at the thrift store, you could take the instructions and use this part or this part where they show how to lay out the pattern onto the fabric and the pattern tissue you can use. So let's do a couple of those. I'll just do one on this cream colored cardstock. I'll just go ahead and use that piece. over so I don't glue it on the wrong side. I love making tags and decorating tags. And this is a pretty simple way to do it. And that's what that looks like. And you can always sew around the edges. Oh, I lost that little triangle and I need it. 
can't believe I found it. I need it so I get the same angle over here. That makes a cute tag. Um, I want to say a method of doing this mass making method would be and now I don't expect everybody to have all of the supplies that I have maybe you don't have all the kinds of things I used for bases and I'm not using cereal boxes but I put that on my list because a lot of people like to make tags and things out of cereal boxes and that's uh, cracker boxes and whatever and that's a great way to use Um, use up some boxes to recycle so you can you know make your own list of supplies you want to use some of these are file folders um, I may have said that they were cream colored cardstock some of them are but some of them are also file folders because I have a lot of file folders so what I was going to say was you could select one type, one or two types of background materials and cut a bunch of tags in various sizes. And then maybe take one or two of the covering materials and cover those tags. And you could go ahead and decorate those. This is not cut straight whatsoever. It must have um, tipped on my paper cutter. Or maybe it's just a scrap that I hadn't meant to cut into a tag. But there it is. So you can either, you know, once you get the tags covered, you can decorate them and put them in your stash or, you know, just save the bases for when you need a tag for a specific journal. That side's not straight either. Is that the straight side I just fixed? I think this cardstock wasn't meant to be in this project, but it is now. It was just a spray, stray cardstock piece that I picked up, but look what a beautiful tag it makes. Um, and then after you make your bases and cover them out of one or two types, then do another type or make them all out of the same base and use different types of coverings. But right now I have so many things out because I'm making a video showing all of them. Um, but I think if I wanted to mass make them on my own, I would just mass make some with book covers and then mass make some with wrapping paper or wallpaper or whatever. And then another day, make another batch with another type and get that. So these are with sewing patterns. Great um, tag bases there. Now before I get into the book pages, because I have a lot of book pages, I'm going to show you the list. I have shipping tags for the bases, um, cardstock, white, cream, or colored, patterned cardstock, file folder, and cereal box, etc. For the coverings, I have wallpaper, music, wrapping paper, mulberry slash handmade paper, piano roll, ledger paper, used or unused. As you, you may have noticed that one of my tags with the ledger was plain, blank, and the other one was the vintage one that had the writing all over it. So either one. Um, a background stamp, textured or embossed paper, map, I didn't show you the maps yet, book pages, sewing pattern instruction, and sewing pattern tissue. You could also use napkin, tissue paper, if it's, um, you know, not too bold, because we're making tag bases that we want to decorate later. Now, the book pages, Where did my book page tags go that I already made? Did 
we get mixed in with these. Now this the uh, pattern cardstock, they're easy. And this was all scraps. These are all cut off pieces, so that's a nice way to use them up. I don't see my book pages. Oh, I see them. I didn't make a lot of them because I wanted to make some with you. I think this came out of that pattern. Let's look at it. It's really cute. I'll have to make something with that. All right. Now, this is shorthand book paper. I also have typing books I could use. This is actually a story that's, or not a story, but it's a historical thing about the, about a local railroad town or something like that. And it looks like it's hand typed, so I use that. Um, this was from a sewing book, sewing instruction. And I liked it because it's got a design on it. It's got pictures, but it's pretty um, subtle, I guess. It's not too busy. It's got the green background, so I used my green card. And then the pictures are cream color and green, so it's not too busy. And this one has um, alphabet on it. This is from a book of house plans. I thought that was fun. So I would want to keep that. I wouldn't want to cover that all up. So I would put some, I would have to find uh, something to decorate this that wouldn't hide the whole thing. Just cover part of it. And then the maps. Maps make beautiful tags. These all came from the same atlas. Um, but this one has smaller counties. So each county has a different color. These are states. And I made sure that this one I included part of the neighboring states because they're just yellow. I thought it added interest. This one has little states, little counties on it. I guess this is right side up. And I liked that it had a lot of color in the little spaces. So I'm going to get some other book pages that I have here. I thought I had them right here. Maybe I used all of the ones I wanted to use. You can use children's book pages, but I wouldn't want to use the ones that are you know, they have the really great pictures because then you wouldn't want to decorate them. You can use, you can make tags with really great children's pages, but maybe add a little lace or something to it, but you wouldn't want to cover it up with other images, probably. So this is, there's some more shorthand. This is a book about fonts, decorative lettering. So... That would make a good tag. This is from Robinson Crusoe. The thing is, it's a small block of text, so it wouldn't be a very big tag. I really like this. So I'm going to cut some cardstock a little bit smaller and make a tag out of that. I didn't get uh, all the kinds of book pages I have. I have a lot of categories of book pages. I'm just getting um, some cream colored cardstock because that's what's handy. That's about maybe five and a half inches. I'm gonna cut it five and three quarters. We'll go three inches. <coughs> I could wrap this around to the back so I 
it's not going to, uh, yeah, I guess I cut it pretty much the right width. Because if I wrap it around, you're just going to get the caption. Okay, so that's good. If I decide not to add anything to it, that's okay, too. I just don't want to forget about this. I'm not cutting it out exactly the same size because I need to be able to um, have a little leeway. So I don't have to lay it down there perfectly straight. So lettering books are great. Oh, here's the pile of papers I wanted to use. Okay, that's good. I found them. They were sitting on my other side. But these are more typography type of things. And I love these kinds of books. That would make a really fun tag, wouldn't it? But this would also make a really fun page in a journal. So I think that's what I'm saving these for. This is so cool. So they're nice um, folios that I can use as a signet as a page in a signature. So I'm just going to put some glue all over this tag. I guess I want it this way. Another thing you could do for mass making tags is to just to cut out a bunch of plain tags like this and then uh, instead of gluing a background to it just um, get out some stamps stamp sets and decorate your tag with stamps maybe we'll do that another day I do have some stamps I want to play with. They're both cream. The cardstock is cream and the background matches it. So I have to make sure I'm moving the right side over. Okay, it goes that way. All right. <laughs> Didn't look right the way I had it. What a pretty tag. If I ink around it and maybe maybe put something like a, a color strip down here, that would be a pretty tag. Okay, here are my other pages that I had out. Children's book pages. I was starting to mention them. Um, these are children's book pages, but they're textbook and it's math. So it's a bunch of numbers. So that is perfect for a tag. And I think I'll use a copy dye tag for that. I don't know if I can save that little boy. And look at the edge of that. That would be great to use in something, wouldn't it? To glue down to the edge of the page. You can see a lot of my backgrounds are neutral colors, like this and the typography one we just did and the shorthand and ledger papers, but a lot of them have a lot of color too. Almost did it, didn't I? I can save that little boy. Now 
I'm just making them with one solid background. Not like the paper is solid, but the piece of paper is solid. You could use two contrasting wallpapers or wrapping papers or whatever and make a, a strip here and then a bigger strip here or you know have a have them going this way you can piece papers together I'll save that little boy and I'll save that and I'll save this so that is a really great tag of the same. These are all neutral pages, it looks like I have here. This pouch contains um, mechanical, math, not children's math, engineering type of books. Like that with the grids. This came out of a binder. That would be perfect. And it's blank on the back. So let's use that. And I know I have a lot of books, different types of books to use because I go to the flea markets and find some really great books. And I'm looking for books less now. See, this is a manufactured tag and it's not cut right. That bugs me. Let's fix it. Oh, I'll just use this card. This is what I've done before to fix these. This is the bigger cut. So I'm going to cut that right there. I flip it over. and cut that edge to match it. Better. <laughs> Would that bug you or is it just me? I mean, I am not a perfectionist, but that was just too much. Too much for me. Wow, somebody's got their car radio on booming. grandson's in the next room, the older one this time, doing his schoolwork. I've been prepping for this video all morning and then we had lunch. Now he's back to school and I'm making a video. He helped me lower my camera, but it was too low. To put it on the next shelf down is too low. And the, the phone holder tubey thing that you're supposed to be able to manipulate, it's really hard to manipulate. It's quite stiff. So we clipped it onto something else. It's on the shelf temporarily. We'll figure it out. I can save that piece. It's got a little bit of grid and the holes. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing because I can't see the screen. And then I can decorate that and it'll be a great tag, won't it? I love that. So if you see engineering books, um, technical books with schematics and things. These are great. These are great pages. Let's do another one. This was my dad's engineering or mechanics. That's not right. He wasn't a mechanic. 
he machinist. That was one of his books. this brown and I think what I would do with that because it would be hard to write on the back of it I think I would uh, glue something to the back that could be written on but you could still see the brown around it so it wouldn't be like this is going to cover the whole front but on the back, I would cut something a little bit smaller so you could still see the brown edges. So in order to get that part, I'll put it over here. And of course you can use text too. I don't think I have any text pages out, but you could just get a book, any like novel, as long as the language isn't bad, um, at a thrift store or the dollar store and use a page of text. And then I could make that into a tag. I have to do this one. So apparently it goes that way. How long have I been doing this? 37 minutes. I feel like I'm probably showing you elemental stuff, elementary stuff, but sometimes it's just good to be reminded that you have all of these supplies and you can just go ahead and make things up ahead of time and have them in your stash ready for you to decorate in the way that will match your journal. Sometimes I make embellishments and decorate them. I'll do a, a video just making tags or pockets that aren't made for a specific journal, and then they sit in my stash, not getting used. So it would be nice to have some ready-made that are um, alterable to match whatever journal I'm doing. So there's that. And I could take this. I just had this piece of tissue laying on my desk. That would be a fun little thing to add to it. And then you can add whatever embellishments you want. I don't remember which way it was, but it doesn't really matter. So that's something I could do. I don't know if I will, but I could. And what's the other bag I have down here? Oh, dictionary pages. I also have foreign language pages. That would be great, too. I didn't bring any of those over here. Well, I've already got this one cut and it's thin paper. I think it would, is a good candidate. But I have all kinds of dictionary pages here. So in this video, as you can see, I am just mass making a bunch of bases. I have a few more bases to do. I'll probably finish these up when the video is done. And then in the next video, I'll take a few of the bases and I'll have some pieces ready to add for um, 
to, to decorate them. Hopefully I'll have pieces ready to make tags for the um, children's book journals that I'll be working on. I just really, I'm really having trouble getting started on them. But I think it's because I'm distracted by so many other things. You know, my dad's appointments and I've had tasks to do, household tasks that I've been putting off. So yesterday I spent a good long time reorganizing my pantry closet because it really needed it. And it was quite a project, but I got it done. I had to tell myself, if you don't like it, you can change it again. So just do it. It involved relocating some things to other areas, other cupboards and whatnot. Or even into the laundry room, the utility room, I call it. It's just a tiny little narrow room where my washer and dryer and my little small chest freezer are. And there's a cabinet in there that holds my household cleaners and things like that. So... You know, I had to re relocate some stuff out there to that room. So that meant organizing in the other cupboards and utility room, too, just to make space for everything. And now I have a tote full of stuff that I have to ask my kids if they want. So I felt good to get that project done, but I'm just... See, there's a nice dictionary page. I'm just saying that because I'm... Just having a hard time getting started because I just feel like I have too many other things to do and I shouldn't start another project like three journals. So that's my video for today. I hope that you were inspired. Look at all these wonderful tags that I have ready to decorate and use. And I have one, two, three, four, five bases, six bases to cover before I put all this stuff away for the day. But I thank you for watching, and um, come on back for the next video. Layla will be here tomorrow to make cinnamon rolls with me, so I don't know if I'll be able to make another video, make a video tomorrow. But when I get it done, that'll be shown, and we'll decorate a tag. So come on back for that one, and I will see you then. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.